All right. So this is me to be determined. Uh, my channel has been around for years and it historically has been all about Aaron Neville. Who? I had started out, the, the OG subscribers will remember, it started as Simply Blessed. And Simply Blessed is how you can find me on all things social media. Uh, Simply Blessed. I later switched to To Be Determined probably about two or so years ago. And that was because um, my channel, I felt like the channel's probably gonna change. And uh, it was To Be Determined what it would develop into. YouTube had reached out to me like many, many years ago, like, hey man, you, you need to be monetized. You have all of the hours and, and everything. You meet all of the criteria. Go ahead and um, you know become a partner and monetize. And my thing was not, nah, it's just gonna be ministry. I'm okay with, um, with, with what we're doing. And then after a while, it's like, well, man, like, think about it. You put time in and uh, YouTube is making money off of what you're doing. And so whether you want to be compensated or not, they're being compensated. So um, eventually I decided, yeah, let's go ahead and monetize. Um, because I do recognize my majority viewer right now is uh, 65 plus male. That's, that's my audience. And so I, I do... Uh, I made a little bit of change um, since I've been a YouTube partner, and, and so I do want to remain faithful to that core. Um, YouTube reached out to me probably two or three months ago, and they said, hey, listen, because you are not really producing any original work, we're going to kick you out of the YouTube partner program. And so that um, drove me to say, all right, cool transition to something else and what that something else is really to be determined depending on how you look at things uh it, it it can shape how how you view it majority of my life has been spent um inside of this world inside of a world this culture inside of the culture is black culture um you know i i elementary uh middle school high school uh, I, I went to predominantly black schools. And then even up on through uh, college for my undergraduate uh, studies, I went to two universities and both of those universities were historically black colleges and universities. Um, and then for professional school, I went on to another, um, it's, it's not a HBCU per se, but it was a school that was designed for um, African Americans, Negroes at the time, um, and Native Americans. Uh, and so that's always been my, that, that's for the majority of my life, for 20 plus years of my education, um, that was my life. Black culture and, and seeing it through that lens. And then after the, um, the education piece, I actually joined the military. And so the military is uh, predominantly made up of uh, white middle-aged males. And so um, I started to see things and I started to try to view things through their perspective. And so I, I think I kind of developed this voice uh, of white middle-aged male. This voice was developed of necessity being unfamiliar with the culture of a Pui. Uh, military uh, background, predominantly. And so in addition to that, I have been a church, um, uh, I've been a church boy all my life. Um, I, everything, my, my all, my makeup is church. And it's not just like a, a building church, but you know the body, Christ. That's that's my makeup. So I, I look at things uh, from a biblical perspective, and so that's that's kind of who I am. And then, um, so you have black uh, culture. You know, 
zero to 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 twenty four. Let's let's call that the black culture. That's one that's one perspective, one voice. And then you have the military voice. And then you have the church voice. And then there was this other voice. Maybe at the beginning of my military career, I was told that um, so military they give you call signs, and uh, a call sign is like a it's not your name but it's uh, a name that represents your character or your, your personality. And in my officer training school, I was given the name Dean. And I was given the name Dean because I guess there was this actor that um, he did a movie, Rebel Without a Cause. I've never seen the movie. and I'm not really interested in seeing the movie. Um, remember, the majority of the military is um, predominantly uh, white in officer ranks anyway and so um, yeah that, that was my lens that informed my opinions and so um, so so you had this rebel this rebel I instead of like shying away from that rebel voice I kind of leaned into that voice and I I mean you, you can see me now like beard most most people that know anything about the military you don't do a beard in the military um, typically uh, unless there's some sort of medical reason. And so it is it is frowned upon, in, especially in the officer rank, um, to, to, um, to have a beard. Uh, even if you have a medical um, rationale, the expectation is kind of you'll suffer through it. Um, and so I did that for the majority of my career uh, until, I, um, until recently. I just said, you know what? I'm, I am killing my face. My neck, my skin, everything is just getting damaged. And for what? You know, why am I doing this to myself? Um, there's a path to not do it. Um, and so take that path. Now, um, I did understand that there was a stigma attack, but whatever. I'm a rebel. And so I, I, I leaned into that rebel perspective. And that rebel perspective is also like a militant. Like, like uh, there's some militancy in there. And so, um, what I did is, my boys, they would send me, like, different news articles and things, and uh, they would talk about it. And so, I would just, like, put on this hat, and and then put on that hat. You know, I put on the church hat, and I put on my my militant hat, or I would put on my uh, middle-aged uh, military uh, white male hat. And I, I would put on these different hats, and, and I would just kind of... Um, I would speak from their perspective, and so eventually, um, my boys they were asking like, well, well, so you know, like, give give this person a name. Who who is like, who is this guy? Whose voice is this? And so, um, that that out of that, um, kind of developed. I I got like some personas, if you will, and so the the education, uh, black male. That's kind of like my predominant voice, and and that's that's me. So that's that's who I consider myself, educated black male. Um, but then there's the um, the the church, the church, um, <laughs> the church persona. That's 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 Bishop Urell. I named him. Um, oh, my name is Leroy. Uh, Leroy backwards is Urell. Um, if you know whatever. And so Bishop Urell, that's that's the church voice, uh, that's the church persona. And then the military is um, Bick Mitchell. Now, if anybody knows um, Mitchell, uh, that name, anybody knows anything about the Air Force, uh, Mitchell, uh, Billy Mitchell was like the father of the Air Force. He was like the person that that we always talk about, Billy Mitchell. And so Bick Mitchell was the um, the military persona. Then you have the militant. And that militant, he's, he's gotten, especially like with politics and just kind of the way uh, things have been recently in the country, that militant um, aspect has become even more militant. And uh, that persona is known as Jamal Kamal. And so you have these four different perspectives and four different lenses that I view things from. And so anyway, the channel is going to be, I, I think it's going to develop into a, a place where, you know, we talk about different current events in the news, military, 
um, politics and, and all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, um, so that's what it'll be. Um, and that's what I hope to come with. And I, I think how that pans out is to be determined. So stay tuned. Thank you. If you made it to the end, but you're so on the back. If you made it to 